I tell you, ooh, that mic's bright. But anyway, it is a blessing to be standing in a pulpit before God's people. This is my second time in over a year and a month that I've had an opportunity to stand before God's people. And I want you to know today, Rhema, it feels good. Oh, come on, help me, somebody. I, 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 I. It feels really good. I've seen some familiar faces, and it's been a few years since I've been here, but just to give you a little bit of background, when I first moved here over 10 years ago, one of the first people to reach out to me other than the visionaires was Pastor Stuart Farley. Uh, I get real emotional sometimes, so forgive me. But I want you to know that your pastor stepped in and served as a father in the ministry to me. He reached out to me. He reached out to this ch my church, and he's been a blessing in my life. And thank you for sharing him with me. Amen. <laughs> Our scripture text this morning is found in Romans, the 8th chapter, beginning at the 17th verse, and it reads, And if children then, heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. That is the word of God for the people of God. Let us bow our heads. Gracious and eternal God, it is another opportunity to come before you and to thank you. Father, I pray that you would decrease me that the spirit in me may increase. And God, I ask that you bless this food that has been prepared for the nourishment of our spiritual souls, that every ear that hear today will allow that word to minister to them in the days to come. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. amen. <sighs> to God be the glory, and I give him honor, I give him praise for the opportunity to serve today. And in Pastor Stewart and Pastor Sheila's absence, I thank God for them again in my life. And we continue to pray for them. And thank you, Brother Dave, for the announcement of that new baby boy. Amen. 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 Birth. New birth. Amen. I want to thank Brother Steve Cook for the invitation and Brother Dave for the, invita uh, for the um, um, invitation and making me feel comfortable for this assignment today. I have to let y'all in on a little secret. Every time I stand, I hold on because I get real nervous. Amen. Uh, I tell my preachers when I, I license a couple of preachers and they're like, well, we're scared, we're nervous. I said, well, if you weren't, then I don't know if you should be up there preaching. Amen. <laughs> but to all of you, Raymond, especially to the visionaries, amen, that are here with me today. Amen. I'm sure they too feel good sitting in a service, and we ask that you all pray for us as we prepare, hopefully, in May to go back into our new sanctuary. Amen. God has been good to a new sanctuary. But I won't be long before you today. I come to worship you in spirit and bring you the truth. You heard the scripture reading this morning, and if I must choose for a topic, it's simply, what's coming is better than what's been. How many of you all know what's coming is better than what's been? The scripture text tells us that we are heirs of God and co-heirs with Jesus Christ. And what that means is we have an inheritance, an inheritance of glory, which we will share with Christ. But my brothers and sisters, don't be surprised that before the glory, there has to be a little bit of suffering. Amen? Amen? Apostle Paul suffered intensely. He was beaten. He was stoned, chained, thrown in jail on more than one occasion, shipwrecked. 
He was starved, naked, cold, but yet he takes the time out to pen this, this scripture in Romans and telling us that none of that that he has endured is worth compared to the glory that is coming. In Philippians 1.21, Paul also declared that for him to live was Christ and to die was gain. How many of y'all know that everybody suffers? I don't care if you black or white, rich or poor, healthy or sick, saint or sinner. No one is exempt from suffering. God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. Yes, my beloved children of God, you're going to suffer. But in our suffering, we are not alone. We are with Christ. How many of y'all know that? <laughs> Have you ever been through a trial, a tribulation, a situation, a circumstance, or had an issue that you thought you just could not get through? But somehow in some way, you know it wasn't man's way that got you through, that only you could give the credit to God himself. Amen. As I think about Sister Ruth when she was on her way to Florida, what the devil meant for bad, hallelujah, God turned that thing around for the good. And he spared her, amen. And I thank God for it. And everybody might have a problem with Facebook, but let me tell you something. When we read stuff like that, all I did was say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, give God some praise in here today, amen. But after a trial and a tribulation, then comes another one. And it seems that it's worse than before. But yet you get the feeling, I've been through this before. Should that not cause us to remember what God has already brought us through? We as children of God need to learn to trust totally in him. And I believe that if God brings me to it, that God will bring me through it. Have you ever just sat and pondered, I love words. And Marion Webster is my best friend, amen. And I said, Mr. Webster, tell me what through means. He says that through is a function word to indicate moving from one side to another side. So that, that lets me know that if I'm going through, that through means that I'm gonna get through. If I say I'm going to the parking lot, I've got to go through that door, the sanctuary door, to the outside door. So that means I'm going through it. I'm going to get to where I'm going only because God has given me strength in my body, strength in my legs, kept me in my right mind to know that if I go through that door, that I'll get through that door. You know, when we think about suffering, I think about Brother Job. He suffered, he experienced personal Pain, loss, and sorrow. Nevertheless, he remained faithful to God. And he had the blessed assurance that my Redeemer liveth. I don't care what you're going through. Acknowledge that my Redeemer liveth. Oh, I don't know if anybody in here has suffered like Job. I don't know if you've suffered like Paul. And I know none of us have suffered like Jesus. Jesus suffered, but his sufferings were unique for he is God. And his suffering was for our benefit. And, to, and he did it in obedience to a holy, perfect, loving father. Jesus prayed in the garden that that cup would pass because as he looked in that cup, what he saw was my sin. He saw your sin. He saw the shame of hanging on that old rugged cross. He saw that for the first time, I'm going to be separated from my father. But most of all, he saw that salvation was for all of us. And we thank him for that today. Regardless of what you've suffered or what you're suffering, regardless of what you've endured or are enduring, you can and will come through because Jesus said he would never leave us 
or forsake us? Do you take him everywhere with you? Before I move my car, I say the Lord's Prayer. Before I do anything, I call on my help. I get dressed in the whole armor because without him, I can do nothing. And without him, I would fail. Your come through may not be your way, but there's only one way, and that's God's way. And I'm so glad to know that the songwriter said that he knows, I'm so glad he knows just how much I can bear. Yes, Rima and New Vision, what's coming is definitely better than what's been. Are there any believers in the house today to know that what's coming is better than what you've been through? If what you've been through didn't make you stronger, get back down on your knees and call on God. He'll come to your rescue. Then come on and give God some praise that after all of this and after all of that, God will bring you through. He will bring you through and there will be glory after this. There will be a praise after your breakthrough. Oh, we have to talk about after Pastor Farley's Pastor surgery. And he's now recovering. Pastor's coming through. And it will be glory after that. Oh, somebody need to go tell Bill Goodwin that I said that regardless of setback after setback, there will be glory after this. Listen, let me tell you something. After the loss of your loved one, there will be glory after this. Oh, there are some cancer survivors in the room today that said there has been glory after all that I went through. Regardless if your child goes astray, you've trained them up in the way they should go. There will be glory after this. Even after this pandemic. And we can put our chairs back together. And the people began to come into the house of God. There will be glory after this. Hallelujah. We've all suffered through some kind of a loss, some kind of a sickness. We've endured some pain. We've been in distress. We've had some form of mental, physical, or emotional stress or strain. And we've even had some spiritual strain and stresses during this pandemic. But can you live with it and suffer just for a little while longer? 1 Peter 5.10 says, after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who imparts all his blessings and favors, who called you to his own eternal glory in Christ, will himself complete, confirm, strengthen, and establish you, making you what you ought to be. Aren't you glad you're not what you used to be? But thanking God that you're better than what you were. But every day you're getting better. And every day with him is getting sweeter. Hallelujah. Every time we witness to somebody, you go ahead on and plant that seed. You don't need to know the result. Just be obedient to the call. Where is your hope? Do we still have hope or have we given up? Has your problem, your situation, the pandemic, the battle of being vaccinated or not be vaccinated, has it caused you to lock yourself up in your own mind to where you're trying to make decisions without consulting with God? Has it made you lose your joy? Has it made you lose your hope for tomorrow? I hear people doubt talk all the time. Pastor, pray for me. I had one lady after praying for her. She said, well, I guess it's going to be all right. I said, honey, where is your faith? People guess it's going to be all right. I hope it work out. I guess I'll be happy someday. Maybe I'll fulfill my dream. I hope I don't get COVID. Our hope as Christians is not the same as the hope of the world. Because our hope is in Jesus. Hallelujah. Hope in the Greek translation means expectation, 
trust, or confidence. So our hope is the confident expectation of what God has promised, and its strength is in his faithfulness. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, saints of God. We have the power of life and death in our tongues. We need to begin to speak life to those dead situations. We need to begin to speak life over our children. Speak life over our grandchildren. Speak life over our church. Speak life over your pastor. Speak life, speak life, speak life, speak life. But who you say you are, be who God called you to be. You are not a victim. You are a victor. Amen. You are not a mess. You have a message. You are not broken. You are healed. You are not hateful, but be grateful. You are not disappointed. You are anointed. Know who you are. You're not fearful. You're cheerful. And you're not whipped because God has equipped you for your purpose. We need to learn to walk in our purpose on purpose. Tell the devil he's a liar. Know not only who you are, but know whose you are. The Bible says we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people to show forth our praises unto him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Has he made a way for you today? Do you love him today? Do you know that he's a way maker? Do you know that he's a promise keeper? Don't you know that he will fix things for you? He will make you the head and not the tail. He'll bless your going out and your coming in. Hey, we serve a good God. Hallelujah, we serve a great God and he is worthy today to be praised. Hallelujah, he is worthy to be praised. Church, we have to know that what we call suffering, now a little pain, a little prick of the needle, and oh, if I see blood, I'm, oh, I'm going to pass out here. Our losses, disabilities, or our handicaps can never compare to the sufferings that Jesus endured. When you start to feel it's more than you bargained for or you shouldn't go through, think about Jesus. Whipped all night long. Drugged that old rugged cross. Beaten. Spat upon. Nails in his hand. Nails in his feet. Blood streaming down. Pierced in the side. Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice and he did it for you. And he did it for me. And your suffering is nothing to be compared to this. And most of us hasn't even shed an ounce of blood. We've got Christians that don't even want to go down in prayer. Yeah, we've got great faith. Faith to know and take God for granted. Now's not the time to throw in the towel, church. Now is the time to thank him. Now is the time to be grateful. Now is the time to thank him for the ultimate sacrifice. We've got to learn to sacrifice as well. We've got to learn to know that these sufferings will one day be over. When he calls us from labor to reward, these sufferings will be over. Revelation 24 declares that God shall wipe away all tears from our eyes. There will be no more death. There will be no more sorrow. No more crying and no more pain. Rest assured in that. This is our hope. This is why we can say what's coming is better than what's been. You may be dealing with something in your life right now that you feel is beyond what you can bear. My heart breaks for you and know that I'm sorry for your pain. But I want you to know today that you're not alone. God has not abandoned you. Your answer delayed is not your answer from God that's denied. He loves you with an everlasting love. 
none of us deserve today. But Lamentation says because of his love for us, we were not consumed. His compassion faileth not. It's new every morning. Great is his faithfulness that he woke us up this morning. We're better off than somebody else. We had a roof over our head. We had heat even in the middle of spring. We got winter. <laughs> Amen. We got food to eat. We had clothes to put on. We had vehicles to get us to church. Somebody today is not as fortunate as we are. Hold fast to the Lord and to his word in your time of intense trials and tribulations. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And allow the Holy Spirit to lead you to someone that you can help. We're looking for help. No, let us be the handouts. Let us give out that we may experience the greatness of God. Just like Jesus suffered before us, we too will experience great pains in this life. But it is not without purpose. And know that what's coming is better than what's been. Amen. Did God show up? Did you get something to Put in your gas tank this week. Such a great message. Thank you, Sister Kathy, for being obedient to the Lord and bringing that word today. We are all been blessed. Let's let's pray. With all our heads bow, Lord, if there's anybody in this place today that doesn't know you as their strength, that doesn't know you as their personal Savior to walk with them through the good times and the bad times. We pray today that they would receive you today and make you Lord and Savior of their life. Lord, we pray that uh, anyone who's been going through a struggle, and that's most of us in some form or another, that our hearts would always go back to this word, go into your word and remember what you said here today, that what's coming is better than what's been. We love you, Lord. We trust you. We just worship you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.